All I can tell you is I am very happy to be here this Monday morning. A lot of people, they don't like Monday mornings. But I, I, I thought there was a period yesterday afternoon after I ate some chicken wings while watching football. And I underestimated how hot those chicken wings were going to be. Ended up with uh, a bit of a fire going on. Uh, it, and it required a Prilosec as well in order to put that out. And I had my nose running, my eyes were watering, and even trying to eat anything afterward, you really couldn't taste it. So I uh, made a fine recovery back up this morning and uh, felt fine when I got out of bed and was ready to come in to do this job today. It was a, from a, a pro football standpoint, for some of us, it was a glorious weekend. From a college football standpoint, uh, well, if you're listening to us in Utah, you're, you're probably happy because... Uh, your, your two big schools both won, uh, but one of them won at an ex- uh, the expense of a school from uh, Boise, and uh, that had some sort of you know impact on all of that as that was going on as well. And if you're a Vandals fan, and I'm told that there might be three or four in the Magic Valley, it was also quite a disappointing weekend, although when you're playing one of the really big-time college football programs, you've got to expect that. But that's how you, that's how you build. I mean, that's how you build for the future is you, you, you play the people, the big boys. And even though you might get a serious beatdown, the idea is it'll teach you and it'll give up. It'll enhance your program because more people will notice it. So it'll be better in that sense. That's enough of the sports talk this Monday morning. I do have a lot of things we need to get to. Andy Staples coming up from Idaho Weekly Briefing with us. Also, Dr. Christine Pickup. You've been hearing about her. Uh, she's an audiologist from Rupert. She's going to join us for a few minutes in studio And she's going to talk about how your hearing is really related to so many other aspects of your health. Those things are on the way. But right off the top, I have to share something that I didn't get a chance to bring up on Friday. Peggy Noonan, who was a columnist for the Wall Street Journal, she was a phenomenal speechwriter for Ronald Reagan. Uh, If you remember the speech that Reagan delivered the evening after the shuttle Challenger disaster, Peggy Noonan is responsible for writing most of that. And, 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 you know, about the... People slipping the earthly bonds and and you know touching heaven and the like. She was a, she was the one who came up with all of that, really recognizing the mood of the country. She has a Friday column called Declarations. Appears every Friday at the Wall Street Journal, unless of course she's away on vacation. And she's writing about the refugee slash migrant crisis that is currently unfolding not only in Europe but in many other places around the world, including parts of North America close to home. And I got to page three of this thing, and I think that she really started to point out what's going on here between the majority of those people living in Western countries versus their leaders. And she went on to write, even Germany is growing at only 1.6% a year. She's talking about a slow growth economy. Welfare systems will be strained. Youth unemployment is already high. In Britain, the crisis should contribute to a vote to leave the European Union outright. There are fears with which the elites... The elites, meaning government people, academics and the like, politicians, they take lightly that floods of displaced people will alter the cultural balance of the country forever. As a columnist in the Times of London wrote, the Gulf states have not offered a home to their Arab and Muslim cousins. Uh, In fact, uh, there was quite a discussion about this on a a TV show I happened to see the other night. I saw excerpts from it. I'm still not watching TV at home. However, you've got people out there who just are turning a blind eye to all of this and saying, well, it's not important that Saudi Arabia or Oman or the United Arab Emirates or that Qatar or that any of these countries actually admit these people. The gap, the writer says, between those who run governments and those who are governed has now grown huge and portends nothing good. In other words, what we're seeing in this country this summer, the summer of uh, Trump, Carson, and Bernie Sanders, what we're seeing here is just a, is just a you know a, more evidence of what's going on where the people in charge don't seem to understand the people on the street nor do they care the writer goes on to say rules on immigration and refugees are made by safe people these are the people who help run countries who have nice homes and nice neighborhoods and are protected by their status those she writes who live with the effects of immigration and asylum law are those who are less safe that would be the people who live in the Magic Valley who will be the neighbors of a great many people who are coming here in refugee waves. She writes, who see a less beautiful face in it because they are daily confronted with a less beautiful reality, normal human roughness. She goes on to write, human tensions, 
Decision makers fear things like harsh words from writers of editorials, but normal human beings fear things like street crime. The decision makers, she writes, feel disdain for the anxieties of normal people, don't we know that here in the Magic Valley, and ascribe them to small-minded bigotries and of often religious and racial and ignorant antagonisms. But, she writes, normal people prize order because they can't buy their way out of disorder. People in gated communities of the mind who glide by in Ubers have bought their way out and are safe, not to mention those in government-maintained mansions who glide by in SUVs followed by security details. Rulers can afford to see national security threats as an abstraction. Yes, yes, we must better integrate our new populations, but the unprotected, the vulnerable, have a right and a reason to worry. Peggy Noonan. Now tell me, does that translate to our local situation here in the Magic Valley where we are being told, hey, you know, why are you even worried about this uh, this, uh, th- this number of refugees? Come on now, you're just a bigot and a nativist. She's making a point, and a great point, that the people who are most concerned are the people who have to do all of the cleanup. The people who are actually making the decisions and foisting it upon us, they all live in beautiful neighborhoods. The only contact they will ever have with these people is when these people are either cutting their grass, coming by and cleaning their homes, or serving them in some restaurant. 813, Bill Colley with you on Top Story at 61. I want to thank you for joining us today. I am not the only person who's bringing this up. We have an entire organization committed to bringing an end to this refugee program here in the Magic Valley, not so much because people want it ended, but because they don't approve of the way that it's being, as I said earlier, foisted upon us. And and no one is answering the security concerns. Do you know that even a fellow like John McCain, hardly a conservative Republican, is actually sharing some thoughts about this too as well. When an establishment figure like McCain starts to become nervous, maybe the rest of us should follow suit. If I were Mr. Baghdadi, I might be sending a few of my recruits uh, as refugees to be able to come to the United States. There you go. John McCain, U.S. Senator John McCain, speaking of the leader of ISIS and basically saying, hey, folks, you better shape up because this guy has already made these plans. Now, John McCain, moderate, as they call him in the media, Republican, he can be dismissed by a great many on the left, and I'm sure that, that they're going to do that. He's, he's always used by them when they have a purpose to use him, and then they dismiss him otherwise. Bill Maher, who is a hero to the American left, has a television program over at HBO, and he and his guests were addressing this problem on Friday night. When John McCain and Bill Maher start warning that there's going to be trouble in our streets, we better take it seriously. The naughtier question that I noticed the rest of the media avoids is... What about the long term? I mean, I so understand why moderate Muslims are fleeing their homelands, but the answer can't really be that we empty out the Middle East of all the moderates and leave it to ISIS and the extremists. If they just come to moderate, tolerant Europe to someday make it less moderate and tolerant, that isn't the answer. Bill Maher, liberal Bill Maher, speaking on his show on HBO Friday night. And I think that this is a man who is starting to realize, perhaps, he's taken off his rose-colored glasses. Let's not kid ourselves. There's a lot of young Muslim men in European cities who, even though they are newcomers to the land, really are not humble about adopting to the ways of the Western world. Uh, They are, again, the newcomers, and yet they bridle at the fact that women walk down the street uh, with a mini skirt and sleeveless dresses on. Um, free speech is not something we see that they always agree with. And, and often their attitude is, we're biding our time until you will do things our way. Hmm. Can anyone really deny that, that that element is there? Yes. I mean, we, we're aware of it. We're seeing it in Dearborn, Michigan, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and across the, the cities in the state of Texas. No matter what people at liberal newspapers try and tell you to try to cover this up, this is exactly what's taking place. In France over the weekend, there's a video available at Daily Caller this morning. In France over the weekend, two women who are apparently from some feminist liberal organization decided to jump on stage at an Islamic conference, and they weren't wearing any tops. And they started screaming about how no one was going to oppress them. One was grabbed and dragged off stage. The other was dragged backstage where she fell down, and in the video, 
you can see all of the Muslim men with their skull caps and their, uh, their white dresses or whatever it is that they wear, kicking her. This is the type of people that we are probably going to have. Some, some have some of these people entering this country, entering this valley as well. Bill Maher goes on to say that his suspicions, well, are of the entire Islamic world. I would be more sympathetic if there was a better track record in the Muslim world of moderates standing up to yeah. extremists. Yeah. I've mentioned on this show before, ISIS is about 30,000 guys. The countries surrounding ISIS that say they hate them have an army, if they put it together, of about 5 million. If 5 million can't stand up to 30,000, I'm a little wary yeah. about this. Doesn't he raise that question and maybe point out that this is intended, that the Saudis, that the Yemenis, that the folks in Qatar, United Arab Emirates, in all of these countries, that this might be part of a larger plan for the conquest of Europe and North America. Because they're not taking any of these people in, they're turning a blind eye to all of it, but they're not trying to stop this, this huge wave of migration that's currently taking place. Drudge reports that Germany has shut down the trains, and Denmark now says it's going to refuse these people as well. All across Europe, you are starting to see people su suddenly, really, waking up about all of this. Meanwhile, there is an upcoming event sponsored by your local newspaper, uh, Pravda on the Snake River, that is going to be taking place where they've invited a lot of people who all have a stake in the success of this program to explain it to the community so that you dumb, dumb dummies will better understand what's going on, and, uh, and then you will accept it. Drink the Kool-Aid, uh, get all glassy-eyed, then go home and say, isn't it wonderful? There was a piece about this. Times News announces makeup of Refugee Forum panel. Larry Bartlett, U.S. State Department. Well, they've got an issue uh, going on here because he's the Director of Refugee Admissions. Ken Toda, Deputy Director of U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Office of Refugee Resettlement. In other words, your tax dollars, and he's making a killing off that too. That's his salary and his federal retirement. Zizi Roamsa, he is the director of the College of Southern Idaho Refugee Programs. He's getting paid to do all of this. Twin Falls Deputy City Manager of Public Safety is going to be involved. Uh, question is, is he going to be bringing up some potentially dangerous aspects of this? Don't know. Also, CSI's Vice President of Finance. Well, CSI is going to finance this pretty well, as we've been telling you. Uh, also, we've got someone coming in from St. Luke's Regional Medical Center. Well, of course, they always need people to clean rooms and scrub out toilets and the like, and here's a great labor pool on the way. Oh, and Wiley Dobbs, superintendent of the Twin Falls School District. Now, this will make the school district grow, which means someone like Wiley Dobbs can go to the school board and say, I have a much bigger responsibility now. You're going to have to pay me more. Hmm. So he's got an interest in this too, right? 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com. By the way, this story tells you what time the event starts. But the uh, writer didn't bother to include the date. Dr. Christine uh, Pickup coming up in just a few minutes.